Well, God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you one more time. Rev Eddie here. Oh, y'all partying out there. Okay, turn down the jukebox. And let's get into this word. Glory, glory, glory. Where are my warriors? There you are. I got any more warriors out there? Hallelujah. Come on, let's keep it warm <laughs> for this powerful, powerful kingdom down here on earth. Knowing where we're going. Yeah, that's the key. Amen. I'm just so thankful to be here. We are so fired up. We've been ministering all morning long, getting the head off the pillow and already on the battlefield. That's the way I like it. Amen. And we <laughs> are here for you. We thank God for each and every one of you out there on YouTube, all of you on Facebook, all of you that the Lord himself has drawn to this ministry with purpose. Oh, you act like he ain't got no purpose. <laughs> with purpose. Some of you need healing in your bodies. It's available right here. Some of you need deliverance. God's going to do it. He's going to heal your bodies, deliver you, set you free, light you on fire, and get you out here on this battlefield for souls. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. If you're on YouTube and you'd like to reach out to me for personal prayer, you just want to chat something out, talk something out, get something off your chest, I'm available. I'm here for you. Come over to Facebook. Search Rev Eddie Wiggins. But now, Rev Eddie on Facebook is one word, no space, no dash, no dot, and no period. Rev Eddie Wiggins, message me, and we'll exchange the numbers, and we'll talk it out, we'll chat it out, we'll cry it out if we have to, shout it out if we need to. We're going to pray it out, and know in your heart that God. Is going to work it out. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of y'all caught our uh, church service yesterday down at the community center? It was their two-year anniversary with Bert and uh, the pastor that you uh, saw that brought the word. Amen. I'm trying to remember his name. But at any rate, they've been funding that ministry. Amen. And they got to see yesterday they the results of their work. They got to hear about it. The cake was good. It was just an awesome time. Three and a half hours. Oh, you act like we wasn't up there no three and a half hours. That video I put on Facebook Live was three and a half hours of ministry. Amen? And I know that's a long time. But we were in it. And it didn't seem like a long time. Amen. But God was moving and people got saved yesterday. People got healed and delivered and set free. Demons were cast out to yesterday. Before I went on Facebook Live, we had a lady in the office, addicted to drugs, homeless, and we prayed for her. Oh, we prayed for her. And it was Bert and myself, this other pastor, and uh, Antonio. And we oiled this girl up with the blood of Jesus, you know, and we laid hands on her. And as I'm praying, I felt it. I felt it come down. It hit my whole body. And her knees buckled. And I looked at her and I said, you felt that, didn't you? That is the hand of God. That's the touch of God. So it started before we even got out there and turned on the phones. Amen. But what a glorious day when, you know, when you get out of the way and you let the Lord do what he does. When it's the Lord ministering a service, it doesn't go by the clock. It doesn't go by your hands. And, oh, my God. People had started leaving, and the commission came out. So if you, if you caught the ending, they're just praising God. The praise. <laughs> just came out at the end, 
And I mean, the words of those songs were so powerful. I'm, I'm standing there like amazed. I'm like, wow. I was just talking to Antonio. I got to get him on podcast. He got a testimony. Bert got a testimony, too. We got to get them in here so you can see where they came from and where God is taking them. But what a powerful church service we had yesterday. I'm still on fire. I'm so happy for the people that gave up. Gave up, surrendered to the Lord for prayer and got healed and delivered yesterday. So many demons thrown out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They're free now to live for him, to be obedient to him. You see, they're free from the bondage that Satan has on their lives. And, hey, that freedom is available to each and every one of you, too. Reach out if you're struggling. We're in it to win it with you. Amen. And we're not going anywhere. So not to worry. Amen. Uh, before I get to this prayer list, amen, I want to give a shout out to all the beautiful people on that island in the Philippines, the island of Mindanao. And Joe and I got to chat. He was doing a Facebook Live this morning, and I blessed him. But I want to keep Joe Ryan, Woody Boy, and the Mighty Mix FM 90.1 on your FM radio dial. I want to keep them lifted up in our prayers. And all that God is doing through that radio station and through Joe Ryan and Woody Boy. Let's keep them up in our prayers. This is about to be huge. Huge. In my heart, I believe that the Mighty Mix FM is about to reach three islands. Oh, they got Lord's been to light them up. And the fact that they would take this podcast, turn it into a broadcast, and light it up in the air with all the power that this radio station has, electrifying power, but Holy Ghost fire and sending it out into the ears and hearts and minds and spirits and bodies of all the beautiful, beautiful people around Polanco and Dipalog City and Dipaton City, Barangay District 1, 2, and 3, and about to be a whole lot more. I just thank God. I thank you, Joe Ryan, and God bless you. Amen. Keep Pastor Nelia lifted up in your prayers. Amen. That girl is on fire from Dipalog City all the way up into those mountains looking for the lost, training up those kids in the Word of God, helping those kids, feeding those kids. She has a lot of responsibilities. Amen. A lot of ministry under her. Amen. And so keep her lifted up in your prayers. And if you're in the Dipalog area and you've got something you can donate, food, clothing, bricks, cement. I don't think she needs any more, but they might do an add-on. Anything you got that can help that ministry, that church, that orphanage, be even better. I just implore you. She didn't ask me to say this. I'm doing this from my heart. I know her ministry. I got to run with her and her husband. Please give. Contact Joe Ryan at the Mighty Mix FM. 90.1 on your FM radio dial. And he can get whatever you're donating over to Pastor Nelia. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. A shout out to uh, Charlotte and Dale and Murray down under. Amen. And they are just on fire for the Lord, sharing the true gospel of Jesus Christ. You ought to see Charlotte praising. She'll record it, or somebody's recording it. Maybe Dale is like, my wife done lost her mind. Let me get this on film. <laughs> Amen. And she'll have a praise song on, and she's just singing and dancing. We thank God for them. Keep them lifted up in your prayers, along with Samanga over in Zambia, Africa. Amen. Keep her lifted up in our prayers. And everything good thing that God's put on her heart to do. Keep Minister Deborah Atwell in your prayers. 
And we're praying for divine healing in her body, in her life, in her situations right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And I mean, I think single-handedly. I don't know if she got a crew or not, but she is out there trying to save every soul on that island of Trinidad. Amen? Pray for Anna. Keep our Anna lifted up in your prayer. She's touched so many of our lives. I mean, what good is a ministry without a prayer warrior? Somebody who can see, someone who can minister, someone who can love. Amen? We thank God for everything she is in this ministry. And just reach out to her, Anna Failed on Facebook. Amen? And encourage her. Amen? We all, servants of God, need encouragement. Reach out to us and just say, hey, love you. God bless you. Keep going. Amen? We need to, to sometimes know that we've reached somebody, somebody out there, and she's reached out to so many of us, especially in this ministry. What a powerhouse she is to this ministry. Keep Anna lifted up in your prayers, along with her son Jacob and Maddie and Morgan, amen, Chris and Micah, all down under. Keep Nick and Patricia lifted up in your prayers and their powerful prison ministry in Texas, and they are burning up them roads in Texas. If you see smoke on a road, you can best believe that's probably Nick and Patricia heading out to another men or women's prison. Let's keep praying for them. Amen. Along with Pastor Mike and that beautiful new church, the Victory Outreach in Fort Worth, Texas. What a deliverance ministry that is. Amen. And Pastor Joel works under him and has his own prison ministry, he and his wife. And they go out six days a week, and he's working 40, 50 hours a week. We got to get him in a podcast. Amen. Keep my spiritual mentor, Coach Gecker, and his lovely wife, Kay, and all his family lifted up in our prayers, along with Laura Bolin and Donna and her two sons, Harvey Carey and his wife, Rosie, Anthony, and Jamal, down on the beautiful downtown street of Atlanta, Georgia, as they are just sharing this true gospel of Jesus Christ with all that will listen, looking for the law saving every soul they possibly can. Amen. Keep Elena Vasquez and her son Nelly Vasquez, her husband Pablo Vasquez, and all their family, relatives, and loved ones lifted up in our prayers. Amen. And we are praying for divine intervention, a miracle of healing. Healing, thorough and complete, throughout Elena's body, from head to toe from head to toe, healed in the mighty name of Jesus. And we're praying for Nellie Vasquez, their son, for complete restoration, healing, and deliverance in his body, heart, mind, and soul. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, keep Rod, my boy Rod, that's my brother there, Uh my brother in Christ. You can catch our podcast. We did a real nice couple I mean, we did quite a few. It's called Bible Study Guide. You can download it on any streaming service, okay, of your choice. You'll find it. And we did a two-part series on the reprobate mind, the narcissistic personality disorder, showing that they're one and the same. Amen. Uh, And Grandma Naomi, who Rod has just sacrificed his life to care for, and what awesome care. You can see it all over, okay? was an awesome care. He, in heart and love, he's taking care of Grandma Naomi. And Grandma Naomi, hey, we love you. We thank God for you. 98 years young and still going strong, still in love with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you, dear. And... Keep my sisters Karen and Jan and my Auntie Annette lifted up in your prayers, along with Sarah and Captain Haynes and their ministries. Uh, Pray for minister, prophetess Mary Jo Mosley and her grandsons Cameron and Jason, along with Dorothy and her dad and her son Lee, Pastor Jody and her powerful ministry, Tex and Gail. Thank God for Tex and Gail. 
What y'all screaming about? Huh? Nosy little kids all over a Texan gal. Tex must have gave y'all a bag of candy or something. I'm going to have to go search your table and see what's going on over there. But we just thank God for Tex and Gail. They are the love, the epitome of love in this ministry, and we thank God for them. And everywhere that the Lord leads me, they love to follow. And what a blessing they are wherever they go. They're getting some rest right now. But let's keep Mateo. Their grandson lifted up in our prayers. I mean, yes, the Lord has done some mighty, mighty miracles lately in Mateo's life. But let's lift up Mateo before God's throne that the Lord would heal his body, his mind, his heart, his soul, deliver and set him free, restore him like only God can in Jesus' precious in mighty name. Amen. Pray for Keith and Cheyenne and Ty and Patience and their two children, Helena Goa and Ashley and her daughter and family. Amen. And I mean that family is under attack, y'all. Let's bind together in love and pray for Ashley. Uh, she needs a 360 turnaround, she said, in her family. And we declare it right now, done. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Protection over her daughter like never before in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Pray for Ladera and her entire family as they're going through, amen. Especially her granddaughter, amen. Pray for Evangelist Tammy and her powerful ministry and her daughter. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> What are y'all screaming about? What time are you doing with y'all now? Or is it her granddaughter you after? Boy, these, these kids fired up today. Y'all fired up out there. Come on, warriors. Let's keep praying for each other. This is not my prayer list. God did this. There's people from all over the world on this prayer list receiving miracles every day as we pray. Let's just keep this going that the Lord started. Amen. Lucia. Pastor Tim and Lucia got to talk this morning. Amen. I think we thank God for Lucia and Sasha. Amen. And Sasha reached out finally to Anna. Thank you, Jesus. She's still with us, y'all. Amen. And just keep them lifted up in your prayers. And Lucia's brother, John, along with April and her children. Amen. Her children are Bradley and Emma and Kyle and Gracie. Pray for her husband, John, and her nana, Sandy, completely healed from cancer in the mighty name of Jesus. And she's praying for complete, complete. Oh, y'all act like I didn't say complete. Complete turnaround in her family that they would all be saved except the Lord Jesus as their Savior and become his warriors in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. There y'all go. You don't even know who I'm fitting to pray for. Kids is on a wild today. I tell you, if you keep feeding them, they're going to keep growing. They don't stay little long. Amen. That's right. Your boy, Jay Clark. <laughs> we thank God for you, Jay, and all you're doing in and for this ministry. You are the best part of this ministry. Know that in your heart. All of you out there, you're the best part of this ministry. Just know that in your heart. Where will we be without you? Where will we be without you, Jay Clark? We love you, man. You keep going, keep commenting. We thank God for you. And we just pray that the Lord will use you more and more and more. It sounds like in your heart, you ain't, you don't feel in your heart. It's not about feeling sometimes, but maybe you're not feeling in your heart that you're doing enough. Well, we pray right now that the Lord would open doors and windows of opportunity for you to be a blessing to others that the Lord would use you more. All this knowledge of this word that you have, that you be able to share it with others. 
We pray for those opportunities, J.M. We thank God for you. Amen. Keep Dominique Moore and Billy Moore lifted up in your prayers. E.S. from YouTube lifted up in your prayers. Scott Woodall. We thank God for you, Scott, and his wife and sister. Let's keep them lifted up in prayers. Total and absolute complete deliverance in his sister, in his wife, for his anxiety, and all he's doing for God's kingdom. Light it up, Lord, in Jesus' precious and mighty name. He went back out, and he saw Barney. Let's pray for Barney right now. Lord, just grab a hold of Barney's heart. Touch him. Touch him like you touched that woman yesterday, Lord. Her knees buckled, and I felt your anointing power all the way through my body as we laid hands on her. Do the same for Barney, Lord. Do the same for Barney. Now, what I'm thinking, Scott, don't say nothing else about Jesus. It brings a reaction. Be his friend. A hiking buddy. Come on, Barney, let's go for a hike. I want to hear about Jesus. I wasn't going to say nothing about Jesus. You wasn't going to say nothing about Jesus? Nope. Okay, I'll come with you. And as you're hiking up there, I'm telling you, it's going to burn in his spirit. And he may ask you, Scott, what? What is it about this Jesus? How can you believe in something you can't see? Explain that to me. Hey, he just opened the door for you to come right back in, Scott. You see what I'm saying? I ministered to a man. He was Jewish, Orthodox Jew. And he knew I was a Christian. We worked together at the same place. And we used to go for walks at break time, have a donut. You know what I'm saying? Take a walk, get out of that office. And he told me straight out, I don't want to hear about your faith. I don't want to hear about Jesus. You will never convince me. Okay. But then I'm telling him about Jesus and who he is to me in my life. Scriptures that have really impacted. And he's listening. Do you know it turned around within a few months? He knew more about Jesus than I did. This was before I went to hell. Amen. And he knew more. He's telling me more than I know about Jesus. He crossed the red line. Are you with me, Scott? That red line in the Bible is at the end of Malachi. Most Orthodox Jews, they're not going past that into the New Testament. He had to go there to know the scriptures, the parables, the incidents that he's describing to me. You just plant the seed, the Holy Ghost to do the rest, is what I'm letting you know, Scott. Amen? Now, I don't know if he accepted the Lord as his Savior. I left that job, or he did, one of us left, so I don't know what happened to him. But it's not up to us. We bring this word, and it's powerful. You speak that word, it's an eternal word. Either they're going to hear that word in hell for forever, or they're going to hear it in heaven for forever. But the words we speak, you too, Jay, the words that we speak are eternal. They're powerful. Amen? And it's a seed you're planting in their lives. You've already planted it, Scott. Let the Holy Spirit water it. You just keep walking the walk, living it. Keep that smile on your face. You see? Showing what your life is like. Now that you've got Jesus, they'll be one. They'll be one. Amen. Praise God. So, uh, <coughs> we got a lot more prayer lists to get through. Donna Love. Nah, I think I beat the kids. Caught them off guard. Amen. Let's pray that the Lord's going to move her family into a nice, beautiful home and that her entire family will be saved. Amen. Pray for. Jerry, Jerry wasn't at church yesterday. Looks like he's not ready to go into a program. He was laying down, cussing and fussing and drunk out in the parking lot. Let's keep Jerry lifted up in our prayers, along with Nikki. Still no sign of Nikki. I'm praying it's a good sign. Let's keep her lifted up in our prayers. Pray for Antonio. Amen. And our, now on Antonio is S.B. Berean. He's one of the rappers in the commission. Amen. 
and I'm loving him like a son. He calls me uncle. <laughs> I'm calling him nephew. We're like family now. And he went out on the freeway, saw somebody stuck on the freeway, and her name is Drina. Amen. And she asked him she needed gas. She asked him how she, he, she could repay him. He said, call Ref. Let him pray for you. She just lost a child, y'all. I mean, y'all, she lost a child. Her heart is broken. So we're going to keep Drina lifted up in our prayers. Amen. Keep Lene, our truth warrior, lifted up in your prayers. Amen. Adrena, oh, we just thank God for Adrena and all that she's doing, all that she's done, and every good thing God is going to use her for in her life, in her ministry, and in this ministry. We had a wonderful podcast with her, and we need podcast number two, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Amen. She got a busy schedule, but maybe tomorrow we can get part two of that podcast as she's ministering behind bars, okay? And uh, keep Grant up in your prayers, along with my boy Brian, DM Faith from YouTube. Salvation for her entire family in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep Bert and his ministry. Boy, you see Bert, he just praised and danced for the Lord at the end of that service yesterday. During the service, he's run, he running the service, but he's praying. He's just a tool in God's hand. It's beautiful to watch. Amen. And we are praying for folks, and uh, he let me uh, give my testimony again, so you'll hear it again there. Amen. Uh, we just thank God for Bert's ministry, the commission, the community center, the homeless ministry, the feeding ministry. I mean, my God. Surrendering to Christ, I'm telling you. And for these young warriors to have caught it so early, come out of lives of crime, I can't wait to get Bert up here. Amen? But keep him lifted up in your prayers along with his wife and ch children and family and ministry, along with Laura Lye. Oh, y'all got to pray hard for Laura Lye. Y'all wasn't praying hard for Laura Lye. You got to keep that woman in prayer. I mean, there is spiritual attack in her home. She's taking care of her baby sister, Sasha. Amen. And we went out and we prayed for Sasha. Amen. And we know demons left. Amen. Now she got to get into that word, get into that walk, get into Jesus. Let him all the way in her heart so she too can be that powerful warrior for Jesus in these last days. What does Pastor Tim always say? Five minutes to midnight? I think he changed it, didn't he, Scott? Now it's four minutes to midnight. Oh, God, we are, we're counting down, y'all. Amen? Jesus is coming soon, and a lot sooner than everybody thinks. Keep my boy John Fowler, <laughs> a funketeer, lifted up. In your prayers. One of my teenage buddies, we kept in touch our whole lives. We was tight. We was close. We ran them streets of L.A. Amen. Keep John lifted up in your prayers. Along with Trenton Barnes, new to the prayer list. Marvin Cade, Jermaine Cryer, Wayne, who went into a program. So far, everything sounds good. He's staying to it. Amen. Barney, that's Scott's Woodall's. Uh, uh, elderly gentleman friend that he met that likes to hike, 91 years old, diagnosed with cancer. We can see it. Can you see what God is doing? He's afflicted, and the only way out is to come to the healer of our bodies, healer of our minds, healer of our souls, and he's using Scott to reach Barney. Amen? Only one way you coming out of this, Barney. Ha! <laughs> Grab a hold of Jesus. Keep Barney lifted up in your prayers. Uh, keep Hattie and Rebecca Coleman and Charlie lifted up in your prayers. Magood, Magodo Stanley. You can find him on Facebook. Very powerful evangelist, pastor, preacher, teacher. He's got a church 
And boy, he got a street ministry that's off the chain. You can see him up on YouTube. Moo, M-U-G-O-D-A. Magudo Stanley, L-E-Y for Stanley. Amen. All right. And keep Veronica, our beloved Veronica, lifted up in your prayers. Boy, that girl's going through and she needs miracles. And God's got every miracle she needs. Amen. Let's keep Veronica, her family, relatives, and loved ones, and her situations lifted up in, in our prayers. Along with our beloved Becca up there on that mountain. Pray for her, her family, and her situations. Amen. And Michelle Bowman, <laughs> our beloved Michelle. Amen. They drew very close to this ministry. Amen. And they've captured the heart of this ministry. we got to keep praying for them. Michelle need a miracle from out of this world. But isn't that where they come from? God's throne. It might seem big, so huge that you're wondering if even God can get you out of the mess you're in. That even God has the resources to get you out of the situation or circumstance you're in. Nothing's too big for God. That's the whole point of all this Bible study. Nothing is too big for God. We serve a God of the impossible. And let's pray that Michelle and her impossible situation, <laughs> that the Lord would do that miracle for her and her family. Amen. Pray for Precious and Eric. And God knows we love our Thunder Twins. Amen. Keep the Thunder Twins lifted up in your prayers. Total and complete healing in their bodies from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. And complete and total deliverance in their, their bodies, hearts, and minds, okay, in situations, completely, completely delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray for Pastor Tim. He sleep. He was up 17 hours, and we started late with all the ministry this morning, and uh, uh, he died. Sweet rest, like a baby in the arms of Jesus, in perfect rest, and perfect peace. Peace. We pray for Tim. Amen. And pray for his lovely wife, Heather, and Jaden, his daughters, Halen, uh, Jaden and Haley. Okay. I messed that up, didn't I? Pray for his lovely wife, Heather, and his daughters, Jaden and Haley. Let's keep them kids lifted up in our prayers. Christina with a K. Down in beautiful downtown Mississippi with Christ in her heart and Christ in her name. Pray for her son, her grandmother, all her family, relatives, and loved ones, especially her brother and his family. Amen. And every good thing that God has put on her heart to do. Pray for Giovanni and Sophia, our 11-year-old girl that needs a miracle in her body, a miracle of healing. And we serve a miracle-working God. Man can't fix this, that this little 11-year-old girl has been diagnosed with but God can and in the name of Jesus we declare this little warrior for Jesus healed total and complete in Jesus name amen pray for Paul down under and Maddie's mom Tina down under amen Nancy Bullock Stephanie Deffer amen pray for Zara down under and her husband Ali and their children, Aran and Baran. Julie, down under. Margaret, down under. Tyla, down under. Amen. Pray for uh, Marie and David Rivers. Wangui, from Melbourne, Australia, down under. Angelica Lewis, down under. Whitney and Cherry and their daughter, Zarlia, down under. Amen. Did you see on my Facebook page, there's a young lady, goes by the name of Mercy ex-stripper, and she's been a part of this ministry for years, amen, way before the podcast, and I thank God for her. Check out that video. We're going to podcast her, amen. We're going to do a podcast with her, and just keep her lifted up in your prayers. 
what the Lord has put on her heart, and she's doing it now, is reaching out to those girls that are still dancing, still stripping, amen, and showing them the love of Christ and how he flipped her life around. Powerful testimony. Check her out. It says, mercy, exclamation point, over and over and over again on my Facebook page. Great video. She just put that up yesterday on YouTube. Amen. Reach out to her. Show her some love from all around this world and this ministry. Encourage her to keep going. That's a tough ministry. Where she has to go could be very hostile with what she's trying to bring, the love of Christ, the truth. Amen. And she's a sweetheart. She can bring that. Amen. Keep her lifted up in your prayers. Along with Jesse, amen, and his mom, uncle, and all his family and relatives. Very important we pray for Jesse's family. Amen. We thank God for Jesse. And pray for uh, Gene from YouTube. Amen. As well as Laura from YouTube and her daughter Micah under heavy spiritual attack in her mind. Amen. And we rebuke those demons right now in the name of Jesus. They must leave Micah in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And she's coming out of this better than she went in, on fire for the Lord Jesus. Closer to Jesus than she's ever been before in her life in Jesus. Precious and mighty name. Keep Christine Starr lifted up in your prayers, along with Robert Minnick Ikina from, uh, Kin, uh, from Houston, Texas. Amen. Apostle Stephen and his ministry over in Nairobi, Nairobi Kenya. Pray for Ryan. And pray for Ken. Keep Ken lifted up in your prayers, along with Martin and Paris and Chester and Julie and Carly and John and Joshua and Jordan and Mariano. <laughs> praise God, praise God, praise God who's ready for a word. Oh, y'all act like we don't have a word up in here. Come on, y'all. Grab them Bibles, unless you're driving. Turn it. Turn your Bible to the book of Revelation. And now we're going into chapter 17, the great prostitute. It's subtitled, amen. And now you get to see a vision that Jesus shares with John on the power, on the power that Satan and his demons have empowered the world with and the institutions and governments that are anti-Christ that exist today, as they did in John's day, they could compare it to Rome. They were under; they were all enslaved to Rome. Rome was the Roman Empire. They had the whole known world under their control, and Caesar, <laughs> Amen, was a god. So they had false gods. Idols, you see what I'm saying, that they had attached themselves to, and they were very, very anti-Christ. They were anti-Jewish. They were anti-everybody, <laughs> okay? And that hasn't stopped in human history, you see? So the great prostitute of Babylon is still here among us today in every government that comes against Christ and the love of Christ and the salvation of Christ. You see? And there's many countries on this planet that are anti-Christ. And they will bind together in a war against Christ and his armies. Amen? In these last days. Amen? So where we're at, the bold judgment, that seventh one, is done. Done. And so now Jesus is showing John where these institutions of evil powered by Satan and his demons are with him and what's about to happen to them. Amen? And then we're going to see <laughs> the day we've all been waiting for, the second coming of Christ. And you know that's capitalized when you read it in study guides and in the Bible. That's second 
second coming of Christ ain't no joke. He's coming for his bride, his children, his loved ones, his sons and daughters. And he's going to bring us home. Amen. So this is a look into the evil and just how evil it is. You see, that's about to be wiped out. <laughs> okay. So John is going to share that with us from the mouth of Christ. This is a prophecy from Jesus to John explaining what it is he's seeing, what's really happening in the spirit realm upon this rock called earth. Amen. So, Revelation chapter 17, I'm going to start at verse 1, and I'm reading out of the New Living Translation for your ease. Amen. Let's back up into our last uh, reading, which was in chapter 16. I'm just going to back up to verse 20 and bring us right on in so we can stay in this movie, stay at that place. Amen. So at verse 20 and 16, it says, and every island disappeared. Remember that? There's no more islands on this earth. It says every island, not some, a couple or a few. Every island disappeared, and all the mountains were leveled. Not just a couple of mountains. Every mountain is leveled. There are no more mountains on earth. And there was a terrible hailstorm. What's being described here is that seventh bowl of wrath, of God's wrath upon the evil. Okay? Verse 21 says, there was a terrible hailstorm and hailstones weighing as much as 75 pounds fell from the sky onto the people below. They cursed God because of the terrible plague of the hailstorm. And that is worldwide. Don't forget the bold judgments are whole and complete. All the other judgments, those first 14, were partial. A third of the year, a quarter of the year were affected. Whole world is now being plummeted <laughs> with cannonball of ice coming from heaven, weighing 75 pounds each. <laughs> you had a car. <laughs> when the cities fell, where was your car? Maybe you got a car. Might have been in the parking garage and got crushed when the buildings fell down from that earthquake. Anyway, Got that picture in mind? Let's go into 17. 17 and 1 says, One of the seven angels who had poured out the seven bowls came over and spoke to me. All right, John. Come with me, he said, and I will show you the judgment that is going to come on the great prostitute who rules over many waters. The kings of the world have committed adultery with her. And the people who belong to this world, not God's people, the people who belong to the world, have been made drunk by the wine of her immorality. People get drunk with power and wealth and celebrity status and all these other things. You see what I mean? And so this evil of this world, amen, all the kings, all the nations that have joined in, with Satan and his beast and false prophet. Amen. This unholy trinity. John's about to see what their demise is. Amen. So verse 3 says, So the angel took me in the spirit into the wilderness. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that had seven heads and ten horns. And blasphemies against God were written all over it. The woman wore purple and scarlet clothing and beautiful jewelry made of gold and precious gems and pearls. All the values, everything that everybody's killing for of this world. Amen. She's got it on. In her hand, she held a gold goblet full of obscenities and the impurities of her immorality. 
a mysterious name was written on her forehead, Babylon the Great, mother of all prostitutes and obscenities in the world. I could see that she was drunk, drunk with the blood of God's holy people who were witnesses for Jesus. I stared at her in complete amazement. Now that is amazing. John got enthralled by this woman. Beautiful, perhaps, I don't know, the Bible doesn't say. But he's standing there in awe. In awe. Which causes the angel, who is standing next to John and has just showed her this evil prostitute, why are you so amazed? The angel asked in verse 7. Must have been a heck of a sight. Let's go to the study guide and get into this prostitute of all prostitutes, the mother of all prostitutes, and see what John is seeing. Amen? For 17.1, I have the destruction of Babylon mentioned in chapter 16. That was our last chapter. 17 through 21 is now described in greater detail. The great prostitute called Babylon represents the early Roman Empire with its many gods and the blood of Christian martyrs on its hands. The water stands for either sea commerce or a well-watered, well-provisioned city. The great prostitute represents the seductiveness of the governmental system that uses immoral means to gain its own pleasure, prosperity, and advantage. Oh, the powerful got it going on. Satan made sure of that. They made sure of that. They killed anybody in their way. They killed anyone that spoke against them. They took all that they wanted and glorified it in sin. You see, there's industries in the world that are evil and yet profiting like crazy. Just off the top of my head, look at porn. It's glorified by some. It's glorified by nation. This type of lifestyle is okay. And they're pushing it. And there's money to be made from this. There's power in this. What about the poor girls that are strung out on dope? The poor men that are used to be filmed that are strung out on dope and don't even know how to live with themselves for what they've done what they allow to happen to them, but that's the system that's being revealed to John. Look at our kids that are being sex trafficked. That's a billion dollar industry. I don't know if you've seen that movie, The Sound of Freedom. It barely touched on the real. I knew of the real years ago, and I contacted the FBI and said, how can a ministry help? They said, we need money. We know where the kids are. We know who's doing this. We know. But to set up strike teams to infiltrate, to be able to get in and rescue, it costs money. We just don't have it in our budget. Are you with me? So I've been knowing about this, but it's worse than that movie brought out. These kids are strung out on heroin in order to make them do what they're going to do with these groups of men or these filthy men that would come and touch their bodies. These kids have to be drugged out, and then you're not getting your next fix until you satisfy this man, or we'll give you your next fix if <laughs> you'll let this man do these horrible things to you. It's a billion-dollar industry. And the cartels are running this thing. Seeing. I can only sell cocaine once. But I can sell these kids five times a day. 
It's a crying shame. But this is the institutions of these evil governments that the world is taking pleasure. Those in the world are taking pleasure in. You, you act like this wasn't happening in Rome. It's been happening throughout history, this type of evil. And it's against God. It's against Jesus. It's against the church. Now, I'm not talking about religion when I say church there. In my mind, when I say church, that's a sold-out warriors for Christ not an institution, because these institutions are drawn in as well. They've got their hands in this evil corruption that's part of the world. They're a part of it. They're feeding off of it. They're making money off of it. How involved? I don't know. I know somebody who do, does know, okay, and she's a warrior for truth. Amen. And it's a nightmare what we're hearing. So when I say church, I'm talking about us. <laughs> God's real children. They're sold out. Isn't that something? So today, we have to differentiate between the church and the sold out. The church is supposed to be sold out, but they're not. They sleep. And on their way to hell. And some of them sitting in them pews every Sunday. The Lord told me 50% of those sitting in the pews every Sunday are on their way to hell to make sure I got into these churches to give my testimony. These churches won't let me in. They hear my testimony. They're like, oh, no, you can't come up in here. You will offend the tithers. We don't preach heaven, hell, judgment day. Not in my church, we don't. We preach, give me, give me, give me. My name is Jimmy. This is a prosperity ministry. They give, and God will give them millions and mansions and fine and fancy cars. I can't let you up in here, Red. Huh. You're against our policy. See, I don't consider that part of Christ's body. Those aren't pastors. They're imposters, and they're leading God's people to hell. But God got a plan for them, too. You want. But at any rate, all of this is this system, this Babylon. This mother of prostitutes, the world, and its power, and fame, and riches, and fortune, and its glory, as they glory in sin. This is what we're talking about here, and this is what Jesus is showing John. Amen? Watch this. Uh, the great prostitute represents the seductiveness of the governmental system that uses immoral means to gain its own pleasure, prosperity, and advantage. In contrast to the prostitute, Christ's bride, that, the church. Christ's bride is the church. That's what we're doing, y'all. We're his bride. We're who he's coming back. He said, many will say, but Lord, but Lord, I did this in your name. I did that in your name. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I don't know you. See, there's a difference. His church, his body, the body of Christ. That's who we are. Okay? In contrast to the prostitute, Christ's bride, the church, is pure and obedient. <laughs> The wicked city of Babylon contrasts with the heavenly city of Jerusalem. See, they're in power now. But wait till you see this monstrosity of gold coming down out of heaven and stop midair between heaven and earth. That gold so refined, it's clear as glass. Oh, hallelujah! <laughs> Are you with me? Amen? So these world powers and institutions and everything they got going on Contrast with the richest place on earth. And we ain't talking about Disneyland. <laughs> the new Jerusalem. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our kids over here, they'd rather go to the new Jerusalem and ride them rides than Disneyland. Amen. <laughs> they know where they're going. Amen. Watch this. The wicked city of Babylon contrasts with the heavenly 
city of Jerusalem. We'll be getting to that. The original readers probably rather quickly identified Babylon with Rome. But Babylon also symbolizes any system. That's what I want to get in our spirit. Any system. There is no power in the world called Babylon now, except for in the Word. But what in the Word is describing as Babylon is all these that are in power on this world for doing evil. Every system or government all around this planet right now is considered Babylon. Are you with me? But Babylon also symbolizes any system that is hostile to God. You want to be hostile to God? Really? <laughs> Let me know how that works for you. Amen. Watch this. I got another study guide. The angel took John into the wilderness to see the prostitute in her reality. Now, this scarlet beast that she's riding on is either the dragon of chapter 12 and 3 of the book of Revelation or the beast out of the sea described in chapter 13, verse 1 of the book of Revelation. Sometimes. We can only get a clear view of reality when we step back from our daily lives and see the patterns of evil and sin around us. Retreats, conferences, and days of prayer and fasting can help us extricate to new spiritual heights. You've got to come out of this world. You've got to come out of the world's way of thinking, what they consider wisdom and knowledge. Is fool's play to God's wisdom and knowledge. We need to be in this word. Read your word, read your word, read your word. You want wisdom? Read Solomon's writings. Read the book of Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Songs of, of uh, Solomon. God gave Solomon, a man, his wisdom. We want God's wisdom. That's what we're praying for Samanga in her Bible study. And every time we have Bible study, God's wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding of this word and uh, what he says about this world and what he says about the world to come. We need his wisdom. Man will tell you there's no heaven, there's no afterlife. When you die, you're dead. That's their best wisdom. That ain't what God said. Believe what God says. He couldn't lie if he wanted to. Are you with me? Amen. Watch this. Take time to view the reality of your life and evaluate its direction and activities. Do these glorify God and renew you to serve others. What have we attached ourselves to, y'all? If it ain't glorifying God, <laughs> we might want to let it go. Amen? Throughout history, people have been killed for their faith. Over the last century, millions have been killed by oppressive governments, and many of those victims are believers. We read about it every day, don't we? They're killing them all around the world, our brothers and sisters in Christ, who are spreading this gospel, trying to get folks saved in the very hostile places. Amen? The woman's drunkenness shows her pleasure in her evil accomplishment. Let's read that again. The woman's drunkenness shows her pleasure in her evil accomplishments and her false feeling of triumph over the church. But, <laughs> but every martyr who has fallen before her sword has only served to strengthen the faith of the church. Persecution is by no, mean, by, by no means a thing of the past. Christians in many parts of the world know that faith in Christ amounts to a death sentence. Now, they ain't teaching that in a lot of these buildings. They're not teaching this in places where they're calling themselves Christian. How to walk, how to live for Christ, how to die for Christ. They're not teaching that. Everything's going to be okay. You watch. God's got us. 
Go back to sleep, jerk. Everything's all right. And that's their sermon for today? Satan then rocked those places asleep where they're calling themselves Christian. We warrior. <laughs> We're in this world. We know what's up. We can see the signs of the time. We're watching what this world is doing and how it lines up with what God said this world will do in these last and final days of human history. Amen? Believers who live in places free of such persecution must not forget to pray for their brothers and sisters in Christ in those difficult parts of the world. They're part of the body of Christ, y'all. They might not be in your country, but they're imprisoned and dying for preaching this gospel. They're a part of our body. Those are our brothers and sisters. We always want to keep our brothers and sisters worldwide lifted up in our prayers. Amen? Now, we got up to uh, verse 7. Amen? So we have to stop in the study guide. Actually, we are over time. Oh, y'all act like we're not over time. We're over an hour. Amen? So let's stop here. We'll continue tomorrow at verse 7. Amen? Where the angel says, what are you so amazed about? Looking at this woman dressed with all this gold and beauty and fame and fortune, drinking from a goblet, the blood of the saints, and loving it. What are you amazed about? Indicating John shouldn't be amazed. But that's how powerful the evil system is. To really take an in-depth look for the Lord to have opened John up to be able to see what's attracting all the people to these evil systems, these evil ways of life, the excitement, the power, the wealth. Wealth beyond wealth. You see what I'm saying? It actually took John aback. Whoa, he's saying. It's like this? Now, I'm not saying John desired it, but he, the Bible says he was amazed. And the angel had to question his amazement. Why are you so amazed? We'll pick this up again tomorrow. Amen. Uh, praise God. I thank God for each and every one of you. Let's pray. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this powerful, powerful, powerful word buried in our heart with your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Buried in our hearts with like barbed wire so it just sticks and can never come out for eternity. We can carry this powerful word for eternity in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Some of you that the Lord has drawn here with purpose. Ah, with purpose. Don't ever forget that. Some of you are sick in your body. You've been diagnosed with something and you need healing. You've been carrying something maybe for years in your body. That causes you not to feel good or operate the way you should. I don't care what the doctor calls it. Healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Some of you are in bondage. Satan's got you. You're addicted to this. You're addicted to that. You're doing this and can't stop doing that and can't stop. That's okay. God drew you here. There's delivering power here. And Lord, I just ask that you break every yoke. Every stronghold tear down, Lord. Every chain rip it off of them. That they may be free of that bondage and now able to live a life obedient to your word in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Some of it, it's in your mind, y'all. I know. And it's a struggle, and you've been struggling with it forever. But that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Is by the power of the anointing, those prison doors open and the captives are free. Free of PTSD. Free of depression. Free of anxiety. Free of bipolar. 
free of schizoid or God knows whatever else they've diagnosed you with. Freedom in Christ right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Some of you have hid in a very, very dark place and you ain't coming out. You don't want to come out. You ain't trusting nobody. And you are fine by yourself in that dark place. I know. I was there almost all of my life, that dark place. If you would, turn your phone on, a flashlight, and look at them walls, you see Eddie was here, written on the wall. I know the dark place, but I also know the light. <laughs> and he brought you here with purpose. And Lord Jesus, I just ask that you would enter that dark place and bring them out in your arms, loving on, into a new life, lit up by you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. And the church said together, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. We'll be back tomorrow. But until we do, can you do me a teeny weeny, tiny, microscopic little favor? Have a good day, a nice day, a wonderful day, a glorious day, a magnificent day, a marvelous day in Christ Jesus, unless you've already made other plans.